Good afternoon, my name is Irving Salazar, and I'll be talking about the Frame of Reference Training, FOR. The main objective of this training is to retain and maximize the performance of the center's nurses. This comes in hand with several complaints from the nursing staff that many ratings seem inaccurate and inconsistent. FOR training is one of the latest attempts at increasing the accuracy of performance ratings. It is largely an outcome of the impression that traditional forms of rated training, such as RET, have not been successful at increasing rated accuracy, even though it minimizes the scaling rated errors. The premise behind FOR training is that ratings be trained to maintain specific standards of performance across shop dimensions with their corresponding levels. They must have a reference point so that there will be a match between the rater's scores and the ratee's true scores. Instead of relying on the process of rating, which is more the, the focus of RET, FOR training has a more content-oriented approach. FOR training directs raters to think about their own implicit theories of performance. What does the training include? A typical FOR training program includes a discussion of the job description for the individuals being rated and the duties involved. Raters are then fa familiarized with the performance dimensions to be rated by reviewing the definitions for each dimension and discussing examples of good, average, and poor performances. Raters are then asked to use the appraisal forms to be used in the actual performance management system to rate fictitious employees, usually shown in the reading or videotape practice vignettes. The trainees are also asked to write a justification for the ratings. And finally, the trainer informs the trainees of the correct ratings for each dimension and the reason for such ratings, and then discusses differences between the correct ratings and those provided by the trainees. FOR training programs include six different steps. The first one is when the raters are told that they will evaluate the performance of three employees on three separate performance dimensions. Secondly, raters are given an appraisal form and instructed to read it as the trainer reads a loud definition for each of the dimensions and the scale anchors. Then the trainer discusses various employee behaviors that illustrate various performance levels for each rating scale. The goal is to create a common performance theory among raters so that they will agree on the appropriate performance dimension and effectiveness level for different behaviors. Then the participants are show a videotape of a practice vignette, including behaviors related to the performance dimensions being rated, and are asked to evaluate the employee's performance using the skills provided. Then the ratings provided by each participant are shared with the rest of the group and discussed. The training seeks to identify which behaviors participants use to decide on their assigned ratings and to clarify any discrepancies among the ratings. Lastly, the training provides feedback to participants, explaining why the employee should receive a certain rating on each dimension and show discrepancies between the target score and the score given by each trainee. Here is an example of how the Canadian military uses FOR training. First, the training program includes a session regarding the importance of performance management system in the military. In the next session, raters are told that they will be evaluating the performance of four subordinates. Then they're given the appraisal form to be used and information on each of the skills included in the form. 
Then the trainer reads throughout each of the scales. Participants are, are encouraged to ask questions. At the same time, the trainer gives examples of behaviors associated with each level of performance. The trainer does make sure that the trainees come to a common for concerning what the behaviors constitute the different levels of performance. Participants are shown a videotape of a soldier and then they're asked to evaluate the performance using the appraisal form explained earlier. Next, ratings are discussed as a group focusing on the behaviors exhibited in the videotape and the ratings that will be the most appropriate in each case. This process is repeated several times. Finally, the participants are given three more samples of behavior to rate, as displayed by three hypothetical soldiers, and then receive feedback on how well they evaluate each soldier. The main goal of this training is to achieve high interrated reliability that reflected a common performance theory as was taught by the trainers. Virtually every study provided training on four main dimensions, motivating employees, developing employees, establishing and maintaining rapport, and resolving conflicts. The resolving conflict dimensions items were usually uh, used as a distractors and were not addressed during the performance evaluation. Through scores were usually determined using experts who had intensive training in the rel relevant performance theory exposed by the trainees. A key driver of the FOR method is the issue of what constitutes an accurate rating. Was the main issue solved? We'll solve the issue of complaints for the nursing staff that believe that many ratings seem inaccurate and inconsistent. FOR training shows promise uh, of its effects of rating accuracy. FOR training For FOR training to be most effective, the performance theory should depend on our organization's mission and culture. Five star rated nursing home. That's our goal. This conclude, concludes my presentation. Thank you.